right, Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you so much for the love of God that you put in our hearts. Father, as we have been learning and walking with you, we've enjoyed all that you've done for us. But Lord, we want to have our hands on all of the inheritance that you have provided. Lord, we need the wisdom to overcome the lies of the enemy so he doesn't trick us. And Lord, we lift up an entire family to you and place them on your altar, that you guide them, watch over them, keep them strong and healthy, Lord God. And even our spouses, maybe uh, some of our, our loved ones are away, watch over them, keep them, protect them, and uh, guide their steps, Father, in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. We're going to call this one this morning, Rooted and Grounded in Him. Rooted and Grounded in Him. Now, there's a lot of great Christians worldwide that love the Lord. But when pressures come on, when situations come on, it's really what we're made of in our relationship with God that keeps us strong. Amen? And so I want to encourage you to develop a great relationship with God, that you and God become one. So the Word of God declares that we are lively stones. That means we're not river rocks but we're living stones being built up a spiritual house, a priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices before the Lord. It's hard for you and I to build a spiritual house if the brick have their own mind and run off, do their own thing. Hello? God, you notice that the walls are connected, the door, everything has its place here in this small little garage building. And yet... God wants your life so together with him that whatever he asks you to do, not only through him, but by his power, he can accomplish. And for you to enjoy the peace that passes understanding, to rest in him knowing that the work has been finished and all we need to do is apply the anointing. Can you say amen? All right. We need to settle down into God's control. And let him root us in his love. Remember these things. In, these are the last days, and we're the children of light. We are not of the darkness, nor of the night. So today, right now, make a decision to draw close to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. God desires for us to rise up like an army and take the land back from his control. All right, go with me to Ephesians chapter 3. Verse 14 through 19. Paul says, For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, say me, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might in his spirit in the inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith and that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to understand or comprehend with all the saints what is the width, the breadth, the depth, and the height. And to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge and that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Say, I am filled with all the fullness of God. Yet my head still gets in the way. <laughs> Doesn't it? Amen. Amen. We go, we go to a place, we want to sit down to eat, we pick up the menu and we go, oh Lord. <laughs> we want to get our spirit really in tune with God and let God guide our steps for steps of righteous men and women are ordered by the Lord. Oh, yeah, it's good that we plan our way, but God directs our steps. Are you still with me? We're to be rooted and grounded in what? Love. There, there remains, um, what is it, hope and faith. And the greatest of these is love. Can you tell me why? God is love. You can't separate God's love from God and God from his love. Amen. So when we're rooted and grounded in love, we're then to be rooted and grounded in whom? 
Jesus Christ. Amen. And if, uh, if uh, death or principality, anything comes against Christ, will Christ defeat him? Absolutely. Does Jesus know any, any loss or any, any lack of victory? No, we walk in Jesus. So therefore, every man, every person goes through extra trials when they're not walking with Jesus. Amen? So let me give a couple points out. Number one, Paul is always referring to the inner man, the spirit man. We are to walk and to live in the spirit. Someone say amen. Point two, each of us are champions. Although we might not feel like it, we might not think like it, the Bible declares we're more than conquerors. We are champions. Amen. And he always leads us in triumph. Therefore, to be a champion and to walk as a champion, we must be rooted and grounded in love. This opens us up to be able to comprehend our position in Christ. Now, I'm going to take a minute out to explain something. Maybe you don't know. Maybe you do. We are Christians because we have Christ, right? But because we have Christ, by our position in Jesus, we've already won the victory. So you can walk in your own power, or you can walk in the position God made you through his son's power. Which one would you rather have? The latter. I want to walk with Jesus I want to talk with Jesus. I want to be with Jesus. Why? So if there anything comes against me, it has to go through Jesus first. Amen. And you think that maybe the enemy is harassing you or messing with you? You just tell him, take his hands off you. You belong to Jesus Christ. Watch what happens. Satan is a master of deception, so he'd like to engage us in arguments and reasonings because he can outsmart us. But when we just trust him like a child and we believe him and just do what he says, Satan gets defeated every time. Then again, one more thing. Remember, we can't live for Christ with the power of only ourselves. As good as you want to be will never be good enough. As loving as you want to be, and I know you're all loving, You'll never be loving enough. We need to have God in there working in us to do his good will and his good pleasure. The scripture says we are complete in him. Go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter uh, uh, 13. We're going to look at the love chapter for just a minute. First Corinthians 13, 1 through 7. The greatest gift, of course, love is Christ. Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels, but have not love, I've become a sounding brass and a clanging cymbal. Now, I used to use the illustrations of my drums, but I, I'm not going to hobble over there and bang my, crash my cymbal. But have you ever been around, and I'm not asking you to raise your hands, around those people that are so full of themselves that, that are just really hard to be with and, you know, just kind of smile at me. Amen. Amen. And the Bible tells us not to think more highly than we ought to think. And if we can't literally speak love and act in love, then we're just clanging about. We're just making noise. You know, I remember years ago when I first got saved, we used to go, I used to go to all these pastor seminars. I mean, there'd be thousands of ministers there and world communion and all these kind of things. So because I wanted to get my hands on all that I could get because I knew God had a calling in my life. But I tell you what, when, uh, when people get around, we need to see love, we need to see Jesus, we do not need to see strife. My first experience of church outside of my own was down a little church there in St. Helens, Oregon. I went down there to preach to four people every week. The word of God gave me good practice. So I decided to stop off at this little United Pentecostal church. How many of you ever heard of the United Pentecostal church? Yeah, they believe in Jesus only, no Father, no Holy Spirit. 
And I went in there, and I had long hair before I knew to cut it. And I had my hippie clothes on because I loved Jesus. And I walked in, and I says, hey, do you need any help in this church? And the guy says, who are you? I says, I'm just another Christian. Come to help you if you need to, some boards lifted or pound some nails or something. He says, I don't think you're a Christian. On what he ended up doing, to make a long story short, is he just got all over my case, wanted to know how I was baptized, why I had long hair, and he told me I was going to hell. Good experience. Amen. Rich really, really comes out, though I speak with tongues of men and angels and have not loved, become a sounding brass and clang. Man, it made me cry. I got in my little Volkswagen, drove off, saying, Lord, what was that all about? And he says, because being a Christian is no good unless you walk in me, talk in me, walk in love. Someone say amen. Amen. Why are people so loving around you? It's because they love Jesus. Then it goes, and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could even remove mountains and have not charity or love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and, and though I give my body be burned and have not love, it profits me nothing. Amen. And then, it, then it describes love. Love suffers long, doesn't easily get upset. Love is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself about. Love does not puff itself up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Does not provoke uh, nor thinks no evil. Does not uh, rejoice in uh, iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. That's love. How many could use more dose of love? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Bear up some things, you know. Amen. All right, a couple of points. There's only one way we can walk and act like this. That is when we walk and act like this in the spirit. Meet with God every day. Now, I must, I, I must uh, agree with you. There are challenges of life. But without walking in Christ, those challenges uh, can be overcoming. Uh, but in Christ, we can overcome every challenge if we allow Jesus to take control. Selfishness does, does, uh, selfishness does put us out of what we call the favor of God. So when we learn to walk in God, we learn to ascend and let Jesus ascend to the forefront, and instead of just rashly speaking, let God speak through us and walk through us. All right, 1 John chapter 4, God is love. Almost done with it. Can you imagine that? It's Seahawk Sunday. <laughs> Amen. 1 John 4, 7 through 10. It says, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone who loved is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God is manifested towards us that God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might through him, uh, we might, uh, that we might live, excuse me, through him, and this is the love that we have, the love of God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the way or means of perpetuation for our sin. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. All right, look at your neighbor and say, I don't care what you look like, I love you anyway. Amen. In order to build a good work, there has to be love. There has to be the lordship of Jesus Christ. We're not just coming to be religious. We're coming to really develop 
our love affair with God and how God develop us inside. Last scripture, Romans 12. I do feel a little lightheaded, but that's okay. Romans 12. Pick up at verse 9. Look what it says. Let love be without hypocrisy. Now, I don't know about you, but I, I get told a lot because I'm the pastor. Pastor, I really love you. I care about you. You can count on me. Oh, I love all that. You know what that does with me? It makes me cringe. Why is that? Because I don't want to hear you say you love me, even though that's wonderful and, and, and I appreciate it and, and keep it up. I, I want to I wanna see you love me. And it's like a lot of people, they don't want to just hear, I love you. They want to see that the love is really there. They want to see the real love. And so a church is a house of love. It's a house to gather, to love one another, to share, you know, how is your week? You know, where are we going? You know, how's God been treating you? You know, and, and, and many countries, we're so blessed. Many countries, it's against the law to go out and preach the word. But thank God, United States, we can preach the word anywhere we want, even in school. So don't think that you can't preach in school. You can. There's no law that says you can't preach in school. Did you know that? They just act like there is because they don't want you to ruffle any feathers. So let's let it be this scripture to us. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor that which is evil, Cleave or cling to what is good. Be kindly affection one towards another with brotherly love, in honor giving preference to one another. Not lagging in diligence, but fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patience and tribulation, continually steadfast in prayer. Amen. Distributing to the needs of the saints and given to hospitality. Doesn't that sound like love? Yep, yep, yep. Amen. Pastor, I love you, but I can't stand you. Goodbye. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So here's what I'm going to have you do. I'm going to have you go ahead, set all your stuff down, and open your heart and ask God to baptize you in the love. Okay? So, Father, right now, as a congregation... We know that Jesus Christ, you love the world, Jesus, that we accept not only you, but I'm asking you to baptize everybody here under the sound of my voice in love. Give them a great dose of love to be loving, to caring. Lord, when that waitress comes up and she's having a bad day, to love them, Father God, and to let the love of God that passes knowledge come forth from us in a new and fresh way. We believe we receive it in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. Now, you're going to find some unusual things 